blind us make it to your house tonight. Father yes, Yahweh. We ask that you bless those that are making their way to the house of judgment tonight. Thank you, Father. We ask that you bless the preacher that is bringing forth the word, Father Yahweh. We thank you for allowing us to be in your house. Name your shoe, we ask and pray. I like to read out of Psalms 118, verse 14. It says, The Lord is my strength and song, and he become my salvation. Hallelujah. Is he your strong? Is your strength in your song? Hallelujah. So you may be seated. It's a good day to be here in the Lord's house. I know that I am highly blessed. I shouldn't even be here, but the Lord see fit. Allow me to get up one more time to see another day that wasn't promised to me. Thank y'all wait for my beautiful wife, my children, my grandbabies, and the saints uh, that's here today. And our saints in Mexico as well. Uh, I want to share something with the church. My trials and tribulations has been heavy, but I brought it on myself. But the Lord gave me strength to keep pressing on. Yes. That's right. He gave me one more day to get it right. Because yes. when I see my maker, I want to be right with my maker. Amen. I know you want to be right with him too. Yes. So I had to get back on my post and uh, up here preaching. I got a few words, permits, if the minister let me say a few words. I was speaking of that my condition has gotten worse according to man. To me, I'm just fine. Because I know what my God can do. I have to wear this little device on the side of me to keep me alive. But I know that he always wants to keep me alive. They they pretend like this is going to keep me alive. But I know who's keeping me alive. But I want to share this little testimony. Amen. Bear with me. As uh, Brother Andre, you say, it's been a while. But as I'm going through these trials uh, with high blood pressure and being in the hospital all the time, it's not been easy. They've been torturing me in the hospital. I got all bru bruises, black and blue on my arm, side of, on the side of me, <laughs> from poking me, taking my blood. It's been a rough journey. But you know what? I didn't give up hope. I didn't give up hope. I kept pressing on. I said, my deacon, Jenkins, can go through what he's going through. Surely I can go through this little thing. This is nothing compared to what he's going through. And so I told myself, I have to do better with my wife. We don't argue no more. We stopped that. I heard the other bishops preaching, but they don't argue with their wife. And my wife here, she'll tell you, we don't argue. My daughter can tell you we don't argue. She's in the house with me. But the one thing I am going, uh, I'm happy to see all the saints here from love yeah. down here. Now, the thing I want to see Mexico be with us, too. Not just love it, but Mexico, too. Because they, they are brothers and sisters, too. Hallelujah. But it's been a rough, long journey. Uh, I was gone, what, about a month, uh, about a year. So when I, I had that stroke, and let me tell you, that stroke was a toughie. Wasn't able to talk, couldn't walk, couldn't do none of those things. Had to go through a lot of therapy. And, and the devil's right there at you all the time, in your ear, in your ear. You're not going to be able to talk. You're not going to be able to walk no more. Just give up. I said, no, I can't do that. I can't put down my faith like that. The people are counting on me. The sheep are counting on me. Pastor said, feed my sheep. I went back and listened to uh, me preach uh, October uh, 9th of uh, 2022. I think that was the last time I preached. And I would begin to listen to me preach. And it's so true what I was saying back then. Even more so now. Amen. We have a work to do for the Lord. We can't we can't allow this body to uh, bring us down because our conditions, what we're going on, our job. This body going to get old. It's going to go through things. Sister Michelle used to sing that song. We go through things. This body go through things. Amen. The devil said, you're getting too old. You can't do nothing anymore. You all washed up. That ain't no truth to that. Apostle Washington always said, keep moving forward. Amen. Keep going. Amen. Keep going. Right. The Lord going to use you to the end, to the fullest. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I like to call you too. Is it okay? Bishop, let us say a few words. Uh, let's go to the book of Psalms 118. Verse 1. What it says, Brother Michael? Yes. 
Amen. Psalms 118, verse what is, 1. What does it say? Oh, give thanks unto now, Yahweh. David is saying, he's speaking to the Lord and saying that we should give what? Give thanks Hallelujah. unto Yahweh. Just Hallelujah. for some things. All things. No, just for a little bit. All things. No, because your condition has gotten worse. Because you don't feel like a saint. You don't feel that you're spiritual no more. That you all washed up. You woke up this morning didn't feel like a saint. Hallelujah. Right, hallelujah. You're supposed to give thanks all the time. Yeah. Not just some of the time. All the time. It don't matter where you at. You can be at the grocery store. You can be at home. You can be at a job. You can be at where you may be. You give thanks. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't worry about your condition because your body's ache, uh, acting up. The devil telling you getting old. That you all washed up. It's not time to get old. Not spiritually wise. Not spiritually wise. The body gets old, but the mind is young. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we supposed to give thanks. Read. Oh, give thanks unto Yahweh. Uh huh. For he is good. He is what? He is good. No, he's, he's not good. He's good. No, he all forgot all about you. He's good. Give thanks to the Lord. Because he is what? For he is good. Good. He is good. He is good to all of us, young and old. Young marriage couples, he's good to you. Children, he's good to you. Mom, dad, he's good to you. Bishop, he's good to you. He look after his kind. We're his, he, we his children. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we just need to give thanks. Hallelujah. Yeah. Read a little bit more. Because his mercy endures forever. Because it's what? His mercy endures forever. No, it, 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 it mercy don't do forever. It no, you reading that right? Yes. <laughs> what did it say again? His mercy endures forever. His mercy endure. Not just a little bit. And to the yeah. end, we got to keep going through what we're going through. We got to. As uh, Apostle Hurley say oftentimes, we got to go to the higher level, get to that next level. Amen. Isn't it? We got to do this. Yeah, you get you get tired of doing this. I'll be the first one to tell you you get tired, but it's not time to get tired. You're supposed to have all this energy. That's right. Got to come in and bring it. Got to have this motivation. You got to jump up and joy and shout hallelujah. You got to clap your hands. You got to bring it. You got to bring the fire. Amen. What happened to that fire that we used to have? Hallelujah. Ain't no time to uh, slack. Get comfortable. Those chairs are not just uh, uh, recline and go to sleep. If you're sleeping, get up. Stand around, clap, do something. Don't come in here and fall asleep in the Lord's house. Lift you up because who knows the Lord may come. He's giving all the signs. The signs are already around us. The signs are here. The examples are here. Look what happened to all these, these cities and in, 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 in countries. Yeah. What are they going through? It's been raining and raining and raining and raining and raining. Hailing and raining, and then hailing and raining some more. The signs are here. So we need to give thanks That's right. for everything, not just the good, but That's the right. bad too. That's right. Wash away your sins. You went down in the water, came up a new creature. What happened to that when you went down in that water? You forgot that? Some of us forgot that we went down in the water. When we came up, we were supposed to be a new creature. We forgot. Have we forgot to give thanks for going down in his name, tearing for the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues? What about that? Y'all forget all about that? But some of us, we act like it. You forgot those those former things that we used to uh, uh, preach and we used to do. I remember all that on South West Third Street. I remember I was busy for the Lord. Like a deacon supposed to be busy about his father's business. I was doing everything. It wasn't enough. I felt like it wasn't enough. Hallelujah. Don't never get to where you think you've done enough for the Lord. Don't never act like you've done you've done all that you can do. That you don't have no more energy for the Lord just because you're going through your loud your Lousy trials and tribulation. You're supposed to give thanks for those trials and tribulation. Hallelujah. 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 Remember the remember the poor. Remember our elders in the church. Mother Washington. She's getting up in age. We need to show her love. And the elder over there, he's up in age. And Apostle Washington's up in age. And Apostle Sanford is up in age. So remember them. That's right. Don't forget about them that labor over the years. Don't let all that labor go down the drain. The spirit been talking about raising funds for Mexico. Where they, where, where that funds gonna come? 
It ain't going to come off the streets. Because a lot of things we used to use on Southwest Third Street, we don't do no more. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. So we got to get back. Amen. Even me, with this thing on the side of me, I have to get back to doing what I do best. Amen. I can look stuff on the, on the computer. Get free Bibles on the computer like I did on Southwest Third Street. I just need to be more specific what kind of Bibles. We got all those Bibles for free. I can do that on my own free time. Hallelujah. There, where there's will, there's way. You got to remember where there's will, there's way. You got the will. Don't tell me you ain't got it. You got the will. The, the will is in your heart. It's there. Look deep inside. You can find it. It's there. You don't give up yet. We come too far. We come too far to give up now. Young people, y'all got to show the world that we can do this thing. Y'all married couples, y'all got to show them, prove the world that, that it's good to marry young. Y'all to prove them wrong when you go to school. Y'all to prove them wrong. Y'all that work on these jobs, prove them wrong. Not 100%, 200%. Y'all mothers help these young young. Help them. Help them how to show them how to cook and clean their house. Their house clean. Hello? You got something to say, Pastor? I was just going to add into the word. The scriptures, the scriptures say, call to remembrance the former days yes, when we were once illuminated. That's we were all illuminated at some point. Yes. So the Spirit's just crying out tonight. Yes. Saying, call to remembrance those former Hallelujah. days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get that strength back. Hallelujah. Get that faith back. Get, that that back. back. Get it back. Don't get to the Lord. Mother? Mother Taurus, you ain't done yet. Mother Mary, you ain't done yet. Y'all, y'all journey ain't over yet. It just begun. Don't let that body tell you, no, I don't put my time in. We sing that song, put your time in. Don't let that devil fool you about that. Cause y'all getting old. Cause y'all getting old up in age. Don't let the devil trick you. No, sir. No, sir. Elder, don't let the devil tell you that you getting old. The body's getting old. Don't listen to him. He tell me all the time. Get, just give up. It's better just give up. Then you ain't got to worry about it no more. Just, just, just cashing your faith. Just cashing your faith. Cashing your faith. You'll make it. You already did work. Just cashing your faith. Just go on and cash it in. This ain't no lotto ticket. This ain't no lotto. This is your faith you talking about. That's right. You got to keep being busy about your father. Why you think Pastor keep staying busy and staying busy? Well, I'm going to do the same. Why you think I keep coming up here now? Because I get tired of getting whoopings. Yeah. I come up here early. Amen. Try to be the first one here. Amen. Back on my post. Doing whatever I can do. Amen. Meditating. Praying. Amen. Helping the Ray Ray over there with the snacks. Amen. Whatever I can do to stay busy like I was on Southwest Third Street. Remember the former days. Pastor just got to reading the scriptures to us. The former days. While I was busy back then. Amen. So I have to get back to that. I ain't just want to do a lot of talking. I'm going to show it. So if you see me doing it, let me do it. I know you want to help me because I'm getting up by age, but let me do it. Show some mercy. Let me let me do something. Don't take everything away from me. You make me feel like I'm old, but I ain't old. <laughs> I got to show these deacon how to do it. My son is deacon, and Deacon Jenkins, my, uh, my other deacon, well, I got to show him how to be a deacon. Yeah. We're not saying they're wrong, what they're doing. But I got to show them, teach them how to do it. Pastor yeah. taught us. Yeah. I got to teach them. Yeah. You got to be here early, open up the doors. Yeah. Unlock the doors. Yeah. The instructions that was given to them. Check the restroom. Make sure everything's picked up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes. Don't be so quick to run off. Go. I greet everyone in the church before I leave. I try my best to greet everyone. Before I go home. That way I know that I communicate with everybody in the church. Amen. Even the little ones. I say, can I have my blessing? They give me a hug. Amen. Baby Lee always come give me a hug. Amen. And your daughter too sometimes. <laughs> yeah, depending how she feel. The Quentin boys, depending how they feel. They some tell me too. Sometimes they feel good, sometimes they don't. It all depends on what mood they're in. But back to what I was saying, we got to endure this, saints. We got to keep, we got to keep on giving thanks. That's right. Hallelujah. Love it, people. It's time for y'all to get busy. Y'all pretty much settled down here now. 
can't, you can't uh, uh, be living in love again. You down here now. It's time to get to work. You got these jobs now. Yahweh bless you a uh, place to live and he gave you a job. Don't get slothful. Don't get lazy. Don't get too comfortable. It's going to catch up with you. Time will tell. Time will going to tell. Where your mind at? Make up your mind. And some say, make up your mind. What you going to do? You going to serve the Lord? Or you going to lay down your faith? Don't lay your faith down. Pick it up. Come on, read. Amen. Let Israel now say uh -huh. that his mercy endures forever. Yes. Let the house of Aaron now say. Let the who? The house of Aaron no. now say. Let the Jones. <laughs> you reading that right, Michael? Let the house of Aaron now no, say. No, let the J Jacob. Let the house of Aaron. Let the who? The house of Aaron. Who's the uh, house of Aaron? We are. The church. It's us that's in the body right now. We're the church. Hallelujah. Now come on, y'all act like y'all sleeping. I must be hitting something right. But y'all too quiet. I must be hitting something on the nail. Y'all too quiet. That's right. <laughs> too quiet. I see the faces out there when the bishop be saying what they say up there. When they look out there among the, on the body. I can see the faces. I can see everybody's face up here. I got a good view. I can see everybody's face. Young and old. We're supposed to be the church. What the church going to look like that ain't nobody doing nothing. They don't lay their faith down. I'm not going to say everyone laid their faith down, but there's quite a few of them that laid their faith down. It's time will tell. That season coming around, walking out the door, throwing a towel. I don't have enough. I'm tired of suffering. I'm tired of getting picked on. I'm, I can't do nothing right. They always ask for money. I'm tired of it. I'm tired. I can't take no more. The proof is already there. We've seen some sheep leave. We don't want no more people leaving. We don't want no more saints leaving. And how are we going to do that? Encourage our brothers and sisters to go to them. When you see something wrong with them, go talk to them. Oh, don't be shy. It ain't time to be shy. Go talk to them. That's why I say go and greet everyone in the church before you leave. Then that, that'll let you know where they at. If you don't go greet everyone in the church, you didn't do your job. That means you didn't love your brother enough to go and spend a little bit of time with him. Amen. Just to say, how you doing? Because right. you you know their body language. If they can't talk, read their body language. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Let's remember those that are sick. They need healing. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get back to what a former day is what we used to be illuminated, always busy. The Spirit talked about the other day, broadcast. We stayed busy at the church. The brother was always at the church. We didn't have time to do anything for ourselves. We're always at the church. All the brothers. Not some. All. Hallelujah. I remember because I was one of those brothers. We had three. And then on top of that, we had a minister's meeting. Amen. On top of that, Amen. Prophet was, uh, 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 Pastor Sandiford was teacher back then. We always had meetings all the time. Amen. Every time it turned out, there was a meeting for this, a meeting for that. <laughs> there was no time to get in trouble. Because you was always at the church doing it, doing the work. Yeah. If you want in the fellowship and you want in the meeting, you was out there raising funds. Amen. Out there in the heat. Amen. Not the air condition. Out there in the heat. Amen. Raising the funds for the Lord. Amen. Car washes. Whatever it took to raise funds. Amen. I remember two years back to back, we raised $50,000 back to back in fundraising. Amen. You know how I know? Because I kept the books. Amen. Now tell me we can't do it. And we had less people over there than we do Amen. now. Amen. True. You know I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Amen. Now it should be even better now since we got more members. Amen. What's the problem? I'm going to tell you what the problem is. You don't want to work no more. You got an E. You got too comfortable in your houses watching Netflix and, and, and Hulu and Disney Channel and Paramount. 
going to the movies all the time, going out to eat, buying your kids this, taking kids there. You don't have to do all that. If you busy about God's uh, work, you ain't got no time for all that. Amen. All these birthdays. I'm not saying birthdays wrong, but I'm saying it's too many birthdays. <laughs> Too much emphasis on birthdays. Yeah, too much. That's right, Apostle. Too much emphasis on birthdays. Why Why not put more emphasis on Yahweh? Yahshua, we won't put more emphasis on that. Want more and more fellowship among the body. More of that. Now, some of y'all got these cell phones. Y'all changing y'all numbers. I can't keep up. Y'all change the number too much. <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day, do you have so-and-so number? I think my daughter asked me, did I have Minister Robert uh, phone number because a man came up looking for you. I said, I don't have his number. They changed his number too much. <laughs> no, I'm saying, I'm just saying I don't have it. But I'm saying we need to make sure that everybody got everybody's number. That's what I'm saying because you never know. You never know. You may need someone in that hour. That's true. Get stranded, and you ain't got nobody number. <laughs> You're going to feel this low. You're going to feel this low. I don't know if you've ever been stranded. It don't feel good. Especially now, it's hot outside. And you ain't got no air in your car, neither? Come on, some of us ain't got air in our, our cars. I know. I went a whole a long time without no air. Hallelujah. Let's get back to the word. Amen. Let Israel now say uh -huh. that his mercy endures forever. Yes. Let the house of Aaron now say uh -huh. that his mercy endures forever. Let's say that. Say it, church. His mercy, his mercy endures forever. His mercy what? Endures forever. His mercy what? Endures forever. Well, what's the problem then? Well, what is the problem? Why us bishops got to keep preaching the same thing? Husband will love your wife. Kids act right. Bishops do right. Why we can't get our act together? Why do the spirit cry out all the time, crying out here lately, crying, crying, crying? What you're doing is you saying, Yahweh, I'm going to put you second. I need me some time now. I need me some time. I've been laboring over the years. I'm tired. I need some, I need a break. Who told you that, that you need a break? I can tell you who told you, the devil. The devil told you that. The devil told you you're getting tired, you're doing too much. Well, you need to rebuke that devil when he comes to you with that. That's right. You need to rebuke him. Come get thee behind me, Satan, because I need to do a work for the Lord. Lord, be good to me. Lord, be good to me. He woke me up and started me on my way. Ain't that a blessing? He woke you up this morning. Ain't that a blessing? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to touch on this, then I'm going to move on. We need to quit letting Ray Ray and those that help Ray Ray over there serve because it's hot over there as it is and y'all acting like ants over there. Amen. Hallelujah. And don't want to participate. Yes, I see it. I'm tired. I got to say something about it. Yes, I know it's already wrong. I'm going to bring it up again. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, That's right. And you need to quit doing the IOUs and pay your money. Yes, That's right. Amen. Pay your dues. You couldn't go to a restaurant and say, let me eat your food. I'll pay you next Tuesday. If a meal today, they're going to say, no, sir, we can't do that. You're going to pay right now if you're going to eat this food. This ain't no Popeye. I, you give me a hamburger today, I'll pay you next Tuesday, next Wednesday. No, this is this reality. This is the church. Hallelujah. So I don't want to hear nobody. I don't want to see that no more. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling what the Spirit's saying. What the Spirit's been saying. And all this playing in church, after church, the kids running around. No, stop that. 
Yeah. Too much playing around. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Pastor. Yeah. Yes, sir. The problem is not the IOUs. The problem is that you're not planning on ever paying them back. Uh -huh. Because there are people who have situations. It happens to me mm -hmm. where I don't have the money. Something popped up. The saints are gracious enough to give you some food. Yes. But is it in your heart to actually remember to come back and pay? Yes. That's the problem. Because we, because you are going to continue to see IOUs. Because yes. the saints are going to continue to be gracious in church and kind and merciful. Because just like Yeshua, Yahweh's mercy endures forever. So does ours. But you better have it in your heart to pay back. Because without that, the church is going to go lacking. Right. And we don't want that. We don't want that to happen. I'm not saying you can't do IOU, but y'all know what I'm saying when, I'm about, when I speak about the IOUs. Just like you miss church, do you remember pay your, uh, bring your tithing and your uh, offering? The next church service? Some of you do, some of you don't. But look at all those days that you missed that you didn't bring it. Went lacking. Went lacking. You didn't bring that offering and that tithing, the next service. All those services that you missed when you was in the hospital and you got sick. Where the, where that where that money at? Amen. Amen. Huh? Come on now. You are too quiet. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You feel condemned. That's why you're not saying nothing. I've been in those shoes while I was in the hospital. And I didn't bring my tithing offering. I felt bad. Amen. And the spirit got on the wives and you give your husband some money for the offering. It don't look right. Because the husband always think the wives are doing it. No, 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 no. Step back now. Step back. You go and get that offering and you put in that tray. Don't come back in the Lord's house without your offering. Hallelujah. That's disrespectful to the Lord. Yes, it is. That's disrespectful to the Lord. Hallelujah. That's disrespectful to the Lord. Yes, it is. Being deceitful, as Pastor Hurley said, being deceitful. Yeah. We don't want to cheat the Lord. That's right. Because when you do that, you miss out a blessing. Amen. Some of us too close to get receiving a blessing and don't even know it. Because you know why? Because you won't do the right thing all the time. You're so close. Yeah. It's there. And he wants to bless you. That's right. Amen. But you mess it up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All this bickering wives talking to each other about this, so and so and that. Stop that. Amen. Amen. Talk about spiritual things. Amen. No more negative. Amen. Spring positive things Amen. in the air. Yeah. No yeah, no taking breaks to gossip. Pastor Hurley was saying, no taking no more breaks to gossip. Stop that. Yes. Stop that. Yes. Go ahead. Hey man, um, even though we weren't here, we're in love, we, we haven't come to church in like two months because, of course, we weren't having service over there. But we still, me and my wife, made sure that every week we paid our five dollars, every so fifteen dollars every week plus our tithes and offering to make sure that we didn't miss. Because even though we weren't here, right. we were still part of the church and it's still our obligation. That's what I'm talking about. That's hey a good example right there. See. Even though they weren't in church, they still paid their time off. They didn't say, well, we're in another city and uh, everybody's down here, so we don't have a church down here no more. Well, I don't have to wear my suit. I can get comfortable, lay back. No. You heard what the man said. He, they paid their time off. Even though they weren't in church, they, they watched the church services, but they paid their dues. They paid their offering. But look with those ones that's not doing that. You know who you are. I don't have to call no name. The Spirit knows exactly who you are. Don't hide behind my job this, my, my job that. Lord's been good to you. Some of y'all just been blessed with houses. And you didn't do anything to deserve that. But he blessed you anyway. Lord can only give you so much. And then after that, he done with you. The Bible said, draw nigh to him. He'll draw it out of you. Yeah. He didn't say you draw a God, you come to me, and that's it. Hallelujah. I'm gonna do it one time. No. He said, draw unto me. Amen. And I'll draw unto you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Let them now that fear Yahweh uh -huh. say that his mercy endures forever. Yes. 
I call upon Yahweh in distress, and Yahweh answered me. Say, I call. Some of us don't call. Amen. Yahweh's telephone is always on 24 7, 365, 12 months out of a year, 365 days. It's always on. You should know the Lord's number by now. Shouldn't be no reason nobody in the church don't know the Lord's number. You know, you know Chuck E. Cheese number. You know Pizza Hut number, Whataburger number, McDonald's number, Sonic, Red Lobster. You know all they numbers. You got it. You got it on speed dial. Just hit the button. Can I help you? Yeah, I want a large pizza, double meat. Me lover. But you know that number, but you don't know God's number. God that never sleeps. Always looking. Always looking at the sheep. Looking at his children. God never sleeps. Hallelujah. Call. Call him. Call him up and tell him what you want. That's if you're right. Don't call him. You ain't right. Because he ain't going to hear you anyway. Okay, read. I called upon Yahweh uh -huh. in distress. Yes. Yahweh answered me and he sent did, me in a he, large, he did, large Yahweh place. what? Answered me. Answered me. That's if you're right. He's going to answer you if you're right. When you call him up and you've been doing all that you can do, yeah. then he will answer you. Prayers of the righteous are much. Ain't no need to go to God asking for this and you ain't did lick nothing. Yeah. Just behind behind the righteous. Right. Keep hiding behind the righteous. You hear these dreams coming through the back door? Don't come through the back door. Come through the front door like everybody else. Don't try to sneak in because you ain't going to get in. No tiptoe in here. Just walk normal. Come through the front door. Hallelujah. I know this message sounds a little rough. That's right. It's needful. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Read that over again and I'm done. I called upon Yahweh in distress, uh -huh. and he answered me and, he answered and sent me in a large place. He sent me in a large place. Yahweh is on my side. Yahweh is on my side. I will not fear. Is he on your side? Yeah. Is he always on your side? No, that doesn't sound right. What I heard, what I just heard just then. Mm -mm. Yahweh on your side? Yeah. Yes. There you go. Now we can begin to work. I heard that loud and clear. I thought something was going wrong with my ears. I need to get a hearing aid. Ain't nothing wrong with my ears. I can hear clearly. I may can't see good, but I can hear clearly. Hallelujah. I read that last one. Did I'm always on my side? Yes. I will not fear. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? What can man do? The question is, what can man do to you as serving God? What can he do? To you as serving God. Amen. That's right. Amen. What can Amen. the devil do to you if you're serving God? What can the devil do to you if you're serving God? What can the devil do to you yeah. if you're serving God? Yeah. Yeah. My time is up. That's all I got to say. Thank you. I'm pass the mic on to the next bishop. I'm not going to fill a bus. I say what I have to say and bring up the next bishop. Let us all rise by bringing up Apostle Hurley by saying, Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, saints. Amen. Amen. You can all be seated. You got to be quick around here when you're bishops. We learned that recently. I know it. We and I'm so thankful that all the bishops have words. I'm thankful that we are in the church that we're in. Amen. You know, Apostle didn't make a mistake the way he set up for the bishops to always be ready. Um, you know, you got these other churches. They got to give me a week. Give me a week and I'll write me a good old sermon. I'll make sure that the tithing is good that day. Make sure the offering is good because I'm going to weed out all the stuff that might offend somebody. And I'll just say things that sound really clever and, you know, never really hit on anything serious or, or 
definite. So, you know, oh, that was a, the message. Spirit was high. And so nobody is so offended that they don't give their offering. But here we expect you to receive every single whooping that the Spirit has to give to you and still give a good offer. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. So I thank Yahweh for the humble bishops that are here in church. <clears throat> uh, I give praise and glory to, uh, to Yahweh for another opportunity to be here tonight. My throat's a little sore. It makes me sound more manly. <laughs> so I thank Yahweh for everything. I thank Yahweh for Apostle Washington, who's not here right now. Of course, he could come in about 30 minutes. Okay. Do I get an hour and a half? I'm going to talk to Yahweh. <laughs> but I thank Yahweh for Apostle Washington because he's always been a good man. He's always been a loving, kind, humble man that sometimes people didn't think was good. They always did, didn't always think he was humble or kind. You know, everybody's flesh thinks he's a jerk. Because he lifts up such a high standard for Yahweh. And he's not worried about you. He's concerned about whether he gets to meet his maker in peace. And he's going to do everything he's got to do to try to provoke and evoke goodness in you. So he's willing to sacrifice you calling him his their best buddy. He's willing to just, you know, some people won't do that. Such men pleasers that were always in. You could be a, a woman pleaser, man pleaser. You know, you're just always trying to be buddy, buddy with everybody. And you never really lift up the right kind of standard to be the right kind of friend that you really should be to your fellow man. But I thank Yahweh for Apostle Washington because he is standing up to be that. <clears throat> and uh I have to say that... uh you know, apostle, you know, just like Paul said, it's a small thing for you to, for, for me to be judged of you, right? right? You know, he said that, right? Yeah. They said, but well, we can't help it. It's in our, it's in our brains to judge everything. Amen. So I have a judgment about apostle Washington. My judgment is that the man is becoming more and more like Yeshua Messiah yeah. every single day. I see it. Yeah. I can, I mean, you know, I, I try not to judge anybody negatively. Over the years, but I just see more sweetness, more love, more mercy, more kindness. And don't you know he got that way because of the church? Amen. If Apostle Washington wasn't in the church, he wouldn't be the man he is today. If you didn't come and decide to be part of the church, you wouldn't be who you are today. And in five years, if it's the Lord's will that the world is still spinning around, you're going to be five years worth of better. You're going to be more better in five years. That is, if you humble yourself, keep on coming to church and keep on letting Yahweh work his work in you, shape and mold you, take you down the path you don't want to go. <clears throat> cause, cause your ears to hear words that you would otherwise never let anybody tell you by coming to this place. And then not just words, but the activities that the spirit of Yahweh puts us in Amen. whenever you're helping people move, right. whenever you're helping people cook, helping yeah. people clean, you become a servant. You, it becomes service yeah. the way that we love Amen. one another and we, we are there for one another. Yeah. Amen. 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 So I, I, I truly value highly yeah. the church. Amen. I thank Yahweh for the, the, the brief words that Pastor Bibbs did speak. Yeah. That, those were words from Yahweh. No doubt about it. One of the, the big themes was suffering. Because Pastor Bibbs is a sweet man. Uh, he's one of the biggest reasons why I came to church. He's the one who witnessed to me and brought me into faith. And we all got a little bit of crazy in us. But I saw Yahweh working in Pastor Bibbs even when he was 29 years old. That's how old he was when I met him. He's about eight or nine years older than me. So he's about 28, 29. I was 20 whenever I came in here. And I saw that, you know, looking past some of the wildness, right, the zeal and the, 
you know, the, he's kind of like me. We're different. We don't think the same, but we do got some issues. Amen. And, uh, whenever I think about pastor Bibbs and, uh, the love he showed me when I first came to church, taking time out just to talk to me Amen. when lots of people wouldn't. Amen. Some people will look at you, your body, your face, you know, you're just your, your clothes and everything like that. And they'll write you off and they won't even give you the time of day. But Pastor Bibbs took out time to talk to me and tell me I was wrong. That I wasn't saved. I wasn't in the right church. And, and I'm telling you, sometimes we don't want to tell people that kind of stuff. But what if he had not? Because he was afraid that it would have been a waste of time to tell me. So we got to start getting more of a heart to minister. Amen. Tell people they're not going to be saved. I think y'all wait for Brother Blake. He ain't afraid to tell people they're not going to be saved. Uh, some of us are more scared to talk to people than others. I'm not really big on telling people they ain't going to be saved. That's not my favorite thing to do. Uh, I don't really like hurting people's feelings. I don't really like offending people. But if there's a rattlesnake underneath your chair and you need to get thrown out of that chair see Yahweh has given us a good enough reason yeah. Amen. to get animated to get vocal yeah. to lift up a standard yeah. I'm looking around and as usual I see a lot of people's eyes a whole lot of places that they don't need to be and their focus is not really here yet Amen. so what should I do should I get in a hover pattern and go around the airport. Wait till y'all ready to hear me. Or can y'all gird up the loins of your mind, pull yourselves together and start listening? Amen. Amen. What was the message that said in 15 minutes? 15 minute message. We're just warming up. Well, sometimes we bishops, we need to do better than that. We really need to learn how to just pull ourselves together and get to the point. If we're not careful, we'll never strive for masteries and we'll never become better preachers. And we'll always blame the saints for not listening to us. But it was us that put them to sleep. <laughs> I suggest highly that you always put the blame on yourself first before you put the blame on other people. Lest you stay the way you are unnecessarily. But. Going back to what Pastor Bibbs was saying about suffering, the reason why he was going that way is because he heard the message on Sunday talking about people who are wanting to backslide. Pastor Bibbs loves people so much and doesn't want anybody to be lost. I had that same spirit. It tears me up to think that people would give up on serving Yahweh. I myself have had to die daily. I mean, I, it would be a waste of time. I don't have enough fingers or toes to count how many times I wanted to give up because my flesh wants to give up every day. To me, it, oh, start smoking again. Start vaping. To me, that equals give up. So anytime I ever feel like doing something I'm not supposed to do, I call that wanting to give up. I'm not talking about, you may say, oh, I love the Lord. It's just I want to smoke this cigarette. No, I'm just saying you want to give up. Amen. I'm just making it real simple. We don't want anybody to give up in here. Uh, a lot of you already have. Some of you haven't even really started this race. I look at a lot of young people. Sometimes we get up here, we start preaching. Pastor Bill, start preaching. We all know sometimes we mess up with our words and we may say some things that might be a little funny here and there. In fact, most preachers do that. Most of us. But some of y'all are so immature that y'all aren't even getting the message that's being spoken because you're too busy goofing off, turning to your neighbor and laughing and, and just goofing off because you are so immature. I turn and I sometimes I see it. Now, don't get me wrong. Y'all all know me. You know, I like to laugh. Right. But I examine myself. I examine myself all the time as whether I am I too immature. I'm always striving to be what Yahweh wants me to be. 
But I look around and I see some people, they never even going to start. Amen. Never even going to start serving Yahweh. Amen. It's almost like when the seed falls by the wayside. Right. But you were born and raised in here. Amen. You've been in here since you was five. Amen. How is it that you could be somebody where the seed, which is the word, falls by the wayside? Right. Examine yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Pull yourself together. Yeah. Gird up the loins of your mind. Today is the day of salvation. <clears throat> Elder Jimmy is a man's man. Now, and nowadays in 2024, that may sound real bad, but that's not what I'm trying to say. You got something to say, Elder Jimmy? All right. Praise the Lord. When I first found out about the church, yes. I was looking at it in Facebook, and Mother Mary was telling me about the church and all this. So I started listening, and all I would hear was a lot of people laughing. Exactly. And I called them one time. I says, what kind of church is this? Is it a comedy club? Because all they do is laughing. I don't, I don't get it. Exactly. I don't, I don't understand why you're laughing. If, you, if it's a church, you're supposed to be listening to the man who's preaching. Yes. Right. Whether it's funny or not, you're not supposed to laugh. You gotta think sometimes you gotta be more mature, like you say. Yes. Uh, you know, when somebody's speaking, they make a, an error in, in, in the speech or whatever, and people start laughing. Well, to me, that's making fun of the person. Right. You're not up there, so you act, you're acting like you can laugh. But when you're up there, you, you tend to think, well, oh, why yeah. are they laughing at me why now? Laughing at me? I know that's so, right. Yeah. But she told me that. I started listening to Apostle Washington speak and I started hearing the words and that's what yes. motivated me to change my mind, tell my girls I was leaving. That's but a blessing. In other words, you counted the cost and you're saying, is this thing worth doing? Yeah, I'm looking around at the saints. I'm seeing how they conduct themselves. Do I really want to be a part of this establishment? Yeah. When I first came to church, it was not the decorations that made me stay. And I saw things that I didn't like, but I had to weigh it all out and say the pros outweigh the cons. The Bible never says everybody's going to be right. You got to work out your own salvation with fear and truth. Now, some people come in here and their focus is so much on the word. They don't notice the shenanigans that are going on around them until a little later, because later on the cares and affairs of this life and all that kind of stuff chokes the word out of folks. So, yeah, the thing about it is, Elder Jimmy said the reason why he changed his mind is because Apostle Washington spoke words of truth, and it and it it was not easy for him to receive it, but because those words of truth were so powerful, he was able to receive it. But let me tell you something. Apostle Washington plays around all the time. We all do. But he strives to put a limit. I play around. I laugh. But if I start to realize that, that your soul is it, does your soul's salvation is at jeopardy because of my desire to laugh, I can stop. Right? You can sometimes wonder why somebody like Prophet Jenkins always was quiet. Because some people catch on a little quicker than others that a closed mouth gets you in less trouble. And he had to learn how to kind of bring it out a little bit more because a closed mouth is not always the answer. You can't. Because words are deeds because you're moving your mouth. That's an action. Sometimes the only way you're going to be able to impart knowledge to someone else is through speech. And so we got to find that right place where we're not playing around too much. Because people do come in here and say all they do is laugh when they're preaching. Ha ha ha. He he he. Okay. Well, it is a, 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 a reflection of your maturity level. And every single one of us needs to grow on up and get more and more mature. The Bible speaks about being grave. 
That means serious. It's great whenever you got a 15 year old that's real serious. They can really make something of their life at a young age. But most young people are not that serious. They still have the minds of children. Okay. So, but life comes at you, hits you. I'm trying to get to the scripture I was going to. But life comes at you and matures you. Okay. And what I was saying about Elder Jimmy, when he, he had a testimony right when I started talking about him, I said, he's a man's man. That means he likes standing up to being a real man. He's in the real man club. He knows it's all right to laugh about stuff, but he, he don't want to laugh too much. Amen. And uh, when he looks around and sees that people, the brothers do stuff out of order, mm-hmm. he don't want to play around with that. Amen. He used to be a basketball coach. Amen. So y'all know the type. Amen. Like he's, he knows about rules. He knows about regulations. Amen. Penalty. Amen. You know, it's it, it's serious. If you're the referee from a, for a game, you got all the parents, the fans, and if you mess up your child's career by making the, co- the wrong call on the basketball game, uh, what we call sports gets real serious real fast. It stops being a game and starts being really serious. So we got to start. Now, of course, there's a line because some people get too angry and upset about stuff all the time because they have all these rules that they think everybody else should follow and they really don't have to follow those rules that you have and you can't let your own self-righteousness be so high that you're judging, judging, judging even when people aren't even doing anything wrong. I've strived all my life to never count somebody's deeds as sins when they aren't. So that that causes me to have a lot of tolerance and be really patient with a lot of people. But then I have to come back and be a little bit more like him or maybe more like Apostle Washington. Get a little bit more serious about my life. Now, going back to where it started, I want to read from Job chapter 10. We can read a lot from Job. Now, you could get yourself so hung up on Job that. Let's like let, let me put it like this. You think to yourself when you're reading Job, well, I'm, ne- I'm not like Job. I have sinned. I have done wrong. I'm not even worthy to read the book of Job. That's not what the book of Job is for. Amen. But it does lay a premise. I mean, it lays a foundation that Job was a man, a perfect man. Yeah. He eschewed evil. Yeah. Eschew evil. He didn't do evil. And he walked uprightly. And he did not sin. And it explains that Satan came to Yahweh and said, let me try him and I'll get you to curse him. So the whole foundation of Job is that you don't have to be wrong for bad things to happen to you. But even Job had sins of his youth and he spoke of them. Even Job at the end of Job had to say, look, I've been doing all this talking. Let me repent. Let me be quiet now. Because even I, perfect Job, am learning something out of everything I'm going through. He's just like Paul. He's not like I've attained. Not in that aspect. We're always going to have to grow and become more perfect. Which may say, which may say, how can you be more perfect? Perfect is perfect. Well, in this way, you can become more perfect. Any more questions? (laughs) All right. Let's read Job chapter 10. Job 10 and 1. Uh Uh-huh. What is written? So Job's got some things to say. My soul is weary of my life. My soul? Saints. You ever feel that way? My soul is weary of my life. life. Do you think Job would have been saying that if all that stuff hadn't have just happened to him? No. He had all that bad stuff happen to him. He's like, I am tired of being alive. Raise your hand if you ever feel tired of being alive. Just being in church. Because this is a suffering way. That's right. 
You grew up, you had a whole bunch of friends, you developed close relationships with them, you got all kinds of feelings for people, and now they don't even like you anymore. That could be enough for your soul to be weary of life. Like, I'm ready for this place they call heaven because this place is trash. (laughs) All the people I love don't even love me anymore. And I stuck myself out there and told them that this is the true church. And they know good and well everybody else is goofing in these other churches, playing around, playing around with God, playing around with righteousness, thinking that you're just washed in the blood and you can live any old kind of way. That's the stupidest, stupidest, unscriptural thing there is. And you expect me to want to be in church with you when everybody who's in church with you is like, I'm washed in Jesus' blood. Let's go smoke some weed. Yeah. We're washed. Let's go cuss. So they're all living the life of a hypocrite with no motivation to be better. So I'm sorry. That in and of itself tells me I've made the right choice to be here. That's right. Period. That's all I need. That's right. Where are we going to go? Backslide with, to be with hypocrites? What does that make you? I ain't going out like that. Going to go live a life where I can't even look at myself in the mirror because I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> Me and Brother Blake were on the text message talking about, um, uh, you know, I said in Yeshua Messiah, we lay our lives down and we don't run away from our problems. But we be like Yeshua, basically. We die for people, right? And uh, But the world is always running away. With us, we stay and we face our problems. We face every single adversity that we have to go through. But it doesn't mean that we don't feel weary. Even though the scriptures in the New Testament says, don't be weary in well-doing. He's only saying that because you do. In other words, don't stay feeling that way. Do what you got to do to get yourself out of this weariness feeling that you got going on right now. You feeling weary? You better do something about it. That's the teaching of the New Testament. Read on. My soul is weary of my life. Uh Uh-huh. I will leave my complaint upon myself. Well, Job, I'm sorry, but my New Testament teaches me something better. I say complaint equals care. In Yeshua Messiah, I'm going to take that complaint and I'm going to cast it. (laughs) I'm going to cast my care to the Lord because I know he cares about me. You're going to, once you finally start casting your cares, brothers and sisters, you're going to be amazed at what you can go through. I'm going through stuff I never thought I could ever go through. I was always praying, Yahweh, move my mountains, move my mountains, because I don't think I can climb these things. Now I'm like, don't move my mountain. (laughs) You're going to give me all the strength to climb. Praise Yahweh. Took me a while to get there. Now I could go back over, go back in time when I was a young man and say, well, I, I, I was doing good back then. Okay. But nobody knows me more better than me. And I'm just telling you, my mindset has changed. It's evolved. It's gone up to another level. To where it's like, okay, a lot of stuff was easy for me because I was young. You want to go help move? Yeah. Yeah. No problem. You want to go move? Well, I kind of feel like I'm going to die. I can barely breathe when I get up and walk across the room. But yeah, let's do this. Let's see what happens. <laughs> you know, he said high blood pressure. I've been having high blood pressure. But I know what to do to fix it. 
you can't blame everybody for all your stuff. You, you're too undisciplined to make the right choices for you to have the best life that you can have, the healthy life. That's a lot of us problem. Us problem. Us is problems. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. See, I was being funny to lighten the mood. We got problems, but a lot, most of them we can fix. It's your lack of discipline that will not allow your life to be better. Sit around and whine about how much your feet hurt, but you won't stop eating those Swiss cake rolls because they're delicious. That's like food crack. Pastor <laughs> Washington said, I'd lose all this weight if it wasn't for those what bacon and ch- cheddar potato wedges and jack in the box after service. I know all about that. I like those egg rolls. I don't want to share any of them. I want all three. And they're big. But we can do things. We just cast your cares to Yahweh so that you don't get overburdened in everything that you've got to go through. That's right. You may hate your job. You may be wanting Yahweh to bless you with something else that you will find more fulfilling. Well, you better develop a positive attitude or you're never going to get blessed. Because Yahweh's got you where he's got you so that you can be uh, patient in your tribulations. You can... You can be positive about what you got to go through. And Yahweh says, well, say to Satan, you see my servant, brotherly subway manager. He's my boss now, y'all. I got hired at Subway. I'm working at Subway now, y'all. And and I'll tell you, I worked, I worked there last night with Brother Willie and Sister Jessica stopped by. Oh, yeah, I'm a Subway employee. And ain't nothing better than working with saints. I loved it. I'm sitting around the house saying, why am I keep getting so fat? Because you sit around all day. You don't go anywhere or do anything. So you don't, nobody try to take what I'm trying to do away from me. Me getting out of the house and having a second, having a second job and get my own self out of the hole I'm in is a godsend for me. Come to find out I'm not as out of shape as I thought. I'm not as sick as I thought because the idle mind is the devil's workshop. You sit around in your house whining and complaining about your problems that you can fix. Sometimes people do get in the way from you fixing. They're they're blessing blockers. You're trying to fix your problems. Sometimes block people block. They say, what you're trying to do for yourself does not go with my agenda for you. And you will have that in, in here, especially in church, because in church, people don't do each other dirty. Because in the world, they know, you know, it's kind of sad that women in the world can treat their men better than women do in church. They said, I better, you know, like, what is it? You know, in, in a, earning your man and learning your man, but at the same time, burning your man. Except they're not, some of them don't even burn them. They earn them and learn them. They don't hit them, split them, and quit them. In the world, it's sad. But you got people outside of church who know how to honor. They may not even be married to them, but they know how to honor and respect and their desire is towards the person that they hook up with. We're in church, married in Yahweh, in the church of Yeshua Messiah, and you think you can get away with murder, just doing whatever you want, not being the best husband, not being the best wife, just because you don't think they're going to leave you. And you're willing to play that game of craps. That's not a cuss word. And roll those dice yes. and just stay that way Amen. and take advantage of one another. Amen. I'm telling you, 
You can't run off. You got to stay. You got to have faith. You got to keep believing your husband is going to stop being that joker. You're going to have keep staying here and keep believing that that wife of yours is going to be honest. Right? You don't go anywhere. What's your problem? Are you still not walking upright? What is your problem? The Bible makes it perfectly clear that the woman can save the husband. Just in case you wondered whether you weren't strong enough of a vessel. You're never going to be stronger in that aspect. As in your hardware. But if you're obedient to the software, you can act stronger than your husband. You can walk stronger than your husband. You can put your husband to shame. You can be saved without your husband being obedient. Without your husband being saved, you can be saved. So what is all of this mess of constantly coming up with excuses of why you're not strong? It's because of my husband. Why? Some husbands have the audacity to say it's because of my wife. And let me hear your reason. This is going to be a doozy. She won't cut. You poor thing. Is that why you're saying? My soul is weary of my life. Well, it might be, and I'm not going to judge you for that. Because the reality of of it is, wrong is wrong. And the only thing that gives you joy and happiness is right. So things may not be all the way right in your life, but until they are, you better show yourself to be holy men and holy women. Tough it out. Go through what you got to go through. Read on. Amen. My soul is weary of my life. Yeah, I will leave my complaint upon myself. Amen. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. So Job is going to speak in bitterness of his soul. Now, if I walk up on one of y'all and I hear y'all do that, I'm going to do my best to try to help you to cast all that to Yahweh. Because you better not hold on to that too long or you're going to destroy yourself. I'm not going to call you a sinner just because you're trying to tell somebody about what you're going through either. We need to learn how to be more good to one another. And less judgmental. But what you better do, saints, if you're pouring out your complaint to a brother or a sister, don't you know you've opened it up for a conversation where they can talk back to you and critique what all that you just said to them? And if their spirit detects, because we all say we got the Holy Ghost, I detect in you that you're selfish. Is that why you're not going to talk about stuff anymore? Because you're afraid now I've just explained to you that they are allowed to talk back to you and say, you know what? Half of what you're saying sounds right, but there's another half that doesn't sound right, brother. And we as brothers and sisters, we got to learn how to be our brothers, sisters, keepers. I hear you saying all this, this, and this, but then I heard you say, and I'm not saying that I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. Well, why don't we focus on that? And if you can learn how to put on your big boy pants and your big girl dress and learn how to have a grown up conversation with your brother and your sister, you're going to be a better minister. Instead of just listening to their baloney gossip mess. I'm sometimes, and it's hard to shock me because I've been in church for a while. I hear about some of the things that some of y'all say when you think you're around your specific number of particular individuals that you feel comfortable with just saying a whole bunch of mess. And it's like you have the ability to turn the switch off of everything you've been taught. Girl, she's stupid. I'm pretty sure we don't teach to say those things. But then what you'll do is you'll learn how to use selective words to still speak evil of one another, but using a special augmented vocabulary that makes you feel like you're not in sin when you run other people down. But Yahweh's like, my vocabulary is just fine. I know you just replaced words. 
and, and I'm going to have to replace you is what Yahweh is trying to say to all of us who try to stay the same way we are and won't change and play the hypocrite and, and try to look like we're walking right, look like we're growing so that we can stay under the radar of the person that you think can make your life a living hell if they find out that you're not walking right. Those are the only people you act right around. You act wrong around everyone else in church. Oh, don't let Apostle Stanford know because he will say something, right? And then he'll tell Apostle Washington and they'll make your life a living you know what. That's your mindset about everything. It's not, is it right? Is it wrong? See, that's a whole lot more simple. Is it right? Is it wrong? Is a whole lot less stressful. But Job's got some things to say. He says, I will say unto God, I will say to Yahweh, do uh -huh. not condemn me. Do not condemn me. Show me why you contend with me. Why are you contending with me? That's right. Is it good to you that you should oppress? So, it's like, okay, I, you know, whenever Yeshua was on the cross <clears throat> and he lifted up his voice to Yahweh and he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, on one hand, he didn't forsake you. On the other hand, he did. He forsook his own son and allowed him to be murdered by sinners. He did. Left him to have that happen to him. So for our sakes. Right? So I look at it, if the devil's doing it, Yahweh allowed it. So in a certain way, Yahweh created Satan. So I could say Yahweh is doing this. Right? Amen. You just got to be real, real, real careful. Because you could be speaking something that could be true, but you better have a positive outlook about it. Because if it's getting negative, it's going to start affecting you. And then the devil's going to try to play games with you. And then you're going to start thinking bad things about Yahweh, bad things about Yeshua, bad things about the church, bad things about all the saints. And before you know it, if you build that up, it's going to become a big database. It's going to be too heavy for you to carry. It's going to destroy you in the end. Roots of bitterness. You got to deal with roots of bitterness. You got to uproot the roots. They will spring up. It's all going to trouble you. You got to get rid of them. Satan's at work. He, he didn't invite you to his secret powwows. He don't want you to know and understand what he's doing. His job is to steal, kill, and destroy. He's trying to trick you. He's not trying to let you in on what he's trying to do. But we have Yahweh who says we're not ignorant of his devices. Why? Because he's telling you what they are. Do you understand? Do y'all understand? So when the Spirit says we need to fellowship with one another, spend time with one another, get to know, know them that, that you labor with, right? Because the devil is going to talk, 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 and talk about to you about them. You need to go know them and learn them for yourself. Because what I've learned about people is that even if I try to verbally express myself to you, words are not enough. A little, very small conversation. I may not say what I really wanted to say. It may be too much to put in words the whole of what I am and what I'm going through. And this, and, and I have to learn that whatever I believe to be true about myself, I need to believe it to be true about you as well. Amen. So I always do that. That's why I can witness to trans people. That's why I can witness to talk to anybody. I don't care how many people you murdered. I can come to you and talk to you. And I, I don't care if you're Hitler. I don't care if you're Saddam Hussein. Obama. Oh, what is his name? Osama bin Laden. Whoever else you think is really despicable. I can talk to all of them because I, Yahweh gives us the ability to find a way to come to one another in the spirit of Yeshua Messiah. 
Now, I'm telling you, I learn a lot in my encounters that Yahweh puts me through with other people. Because I'll be thinking I'm a good old guy. And then I'll go fellowship with Deacon Jenkins. And that is he's talking to me and we're going places and we're doing things. We're getting in conditions, situations, scenarios, and I'm with him. He's saying things that I wouldn't say. I'm saying things that he wouldn't say because not because they're evil, but because we're two different people from two different walks of life. What he's saying and doing makes me think, evoking thought, and the same for me to him. And Yahweh uses us to shape one another. If you won't fellowship, how are you going to be made perfect in shape? You may have that three people in church that you'll go see. And I understand what your first reason for why you do it is. Well, we're always at church. I'm at work or at church. I ain't got a lot of time. We all, we all think that. That's our first thought. Quit always going with your first knee jerk thought. That's what the church is for is to tell you, no, your first thought's not right. What I'm telling you from Yahweh is right. You don't go fellowship with brother so and so because you don't have much in common with them. Period. Amen. Or you like to cuss and he's going to call you out. Amen. You like to jest and foolish talk and they're, this particular brother is going to call you out so you don't ever go fellowship with them. Amen. Or you say, well, I heard that they talk about people behind their back and I don't want to be, I don't want to subject myself to that. Amen. Because there are people in here who talk about each other behind their backs. Amen. You're doing yourself a disservice. You're doing that brother and sister that you think has a problem, a disservice. Because Yeshua Messiah came down to save sinners. Why can't you go visit a brother's house that you have heard something sinful about? Why can't you go over there and not do the things that you heard that they do? And it could have been a lie. Because somebody could have just been running their mouth about your brother. And you're going to let something like that stop you from fellowshipping with certain saints because of something somebody said to you. People say stuff about one another in here and the person that they tell. OK. Here's the two scenarios that people talk about each other behind their back in church. You just plumb know you're doing the wrong thing and you just gossip. There's that. Or you're telling bishops on brothers and sisters to cover up your own sins. Amen. Those are the two ways that you... The, the second one is a disguise of being a gossip and a backbiter. The other one is you know what you're doing. Or you're just on autopilot and your mind hasn't come open to realize that you're doing the wrong thing yet. But the Spirit is crying out. It's trying to show us what we can do. <clears throat> to get our minds where it needs to be. We know at the very end of the book of Job, Job stopped complaining. He just hushed his mouth and said, okay, Yahweh, you put me in my place. Yahweh said, who made this? Who did that? Do you know where the wind comes from? Do you know this? Do you know that? Do you know this thing? And he said, I've spoken, but now I'm going to hush my mouth. So what I'm trying to tell you, if Job, who didn't do anything wrong, can hush his mouth, perhaps you who say, well, I have done some things wrong, can hush your mouth too. Now suddenly, the book of Job has become useful to you. Don't cast yourself down so low that the book doesn't even become useful to you. Read on. Amen. Show me why you contend with me. Mm -hmm. Is it good to you that you should oppress, that you should despise the work of your hands uh -huh. and shine upon the counsel of the wicked? Well, because he's, he knows he didn't do anything wrong. So his mind is just racing through all the scenarios of why this is happening to me. The mind. Ooh. You know, when the, you know, the United Negro College Fund way back in the 80s, they said, because the mind it was it's a, it's a terrible thing to waste. Right. Well, I'm just going to say. 
The mind is a terrible thing. When it's unbridled. Whenever you're trying to figure out what's going on and you don't know. You, your mind will never stop running through scenarios. It's a computer. Your mind runs to holy scenarios, sinful scenarios. It's, 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 it's open. But you've got to take what you've been taught here in church to when, when you have a problem that hasn't been fixed in your life and your mind races about it. You don't have to, you don't have to beat yourself down to nothingness because, because you're in the middle of your journey. Of course, your mind is trying to figure out what to do to fix your problem. If you can acknowledge that that's all it is and you know your flesh doesn't know everything and it's corruptible, it will let you down. So you can't trust in it. And therefore, what I'm trying to say is your, your opinions about what you think is right and Right or wrong is not always right. You're not that good to where you can trust every conclusion that you come to. So if you can put all those factors together, you can go through anything and never backslide. Anything and never backslide. Because what we know is that Yahweh for people who love him is going to show up for him. Job would have fallen even though he had not done anything wrong. If Yahweh had not intervened at the end of the book, he would have fallen too. Because he was saying, why are you oppressing me? Why are you doing good for the wicked and doing bad for me? And Yahweh's like, it may look like that right now, but I don't have to explain all of this to you right now. I'm not. That's the whole point of this thing. This is a test of your faith. Hallelujah. The whole point of it is a test of your faith. Read on. Have you? I, yeah. Yeah. It's like we all want to know our end. But Yahweh says the only end that you need to know is that you are going to uh, you're going to trust that I'm going to give you your daily bread every day. So all you need to worry about, I'm giving you your necessary food, spiritual knowledge, information. I'm going to comfort you. I'm going to be there for you every single day. And you just need to take care of this millisecond. Take care of right now. Quit worrying about everything else. I know sometimes it's good. Okay. Y'all are, y'all moved all here from, from, from multiple houses to one house, right? That ain't always easy. <clears throat> I know that Mother Mary and Elder Jimmy, Mother Mary loves things to be super clean. Yes. Elder Jimmy loves order. Yes. It's going to be good. What we yes. Need. What we need. It's going to be good. Yes. But in order for it to work out, everybody's going to have to learn something. Yes. To coexist. Yes. We all remember that Marco Polo you put out that one time. <laughs> I can't forget it. Just like I can't forget Brother Chris's Marco Polo begging Apostle Washington, no more fires at on my barbecue. He says, my ribs. I, I, I remember stuff sometimes. I remember stuff that other people don't remember. For such a time as this. Amen. I've done stuff like that too. Amen. Where it was like, I turned into Judge Dredd. Amen. Judge, jury, executioner. Amen. I am the law. Amen. And Yeshua, even though we got House of Judgment on the wall, not like that. We don't, we don't take matters into our own hands. We don't. We don't take people to jail, you know, so many limits. We, you know, we don't have military here, <laughs> no security guards. A lot of stuff, we leave it in the hands of the angels of, of Yahweh. And, and we just pray for folks and we, uh, and we, and we, uh, 
We always examine ourselves over and over and over again to see if I'm not merciful enough. Perhaps it's my approach. And so that's how we become. I was saying Apostle Washington has become kinder, more and more loving, more and more understanding. And that's through his constant, every single problem that he faces, he examines himself. And sometimes over the years, micro changes. It's not detectable to the human eye, you know, in, in the moment. But over a couple of years, it's like you're another person. You are up to a whole nother level. And I'd like to believe that that's happening to me, too. And I want to be saved. I'm striving, striving, striving. Lord knows because you can lie to yourself. You can. The heart is deceitful above all things. It can be so wicked. Amen. You can think you're right and you're not right. So all you can do is fall to Yahweh and beg him to continue to the perfection process. And you know that he loves you and he's for you. And so you put your trust that he is going to help you. And so it's that hope that gets you to stand back on your feet. And it's that very thing that gets you back into action. And that's what makes you perfect. Hallelujah. So who knows? Maybe Yahweh will bless us to be able to start raising funds and make some money off of other folk. Because they keep on coming up with rules to make it hard to ask people for donations. But if we can't find ways to make money from the outside, it's on us. And we're going to continue to suffer, sacrifice, and do what we got to do. And if you are like, well, I... I wanted to go to Jack in the Box after after church, but you spent the money here instead. Now, I get it. Your flesh is going to feel a certain kind of way. And it's bigger than just one burger from Jack in the Box. If you are, if you, you may want to leave it small like that so you psych yourself out and not realize the major sacrifices that you're making. But if you really wrote it all down, we're talking about Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of sacrifices that we've made over the years. But that's got to be okay. I don't think it's okay that you, for you to have to psych yourself out to do good. Why not do good and realize it fully? I think realizing things fully is a whole lot better than not really knowing what's going on. Because the devil will come back and lie to you and told you you didn't give anything. And try to make you feel like you're not saved. You know the devil will just try to tell you stuff like you're not going to be saved. Just because he wants to stress you out. Because what he wants to do, saints, is he wants to put a negative feeling to church. It's like if you try to punish your children by making them read the Bible. Now, whenever they think of the Bible, they think of punishment. <clears throat> the devil wants everything that has to do with church, put a bad taste in your mouth. The only way he can do that is if you're all ignorant. You got to know what you're doing in here. Got to quit letting the devil lie to you all the time. And you too lazy to investigate what Satan has to say to you. Search all things. Hallelujah. Quit just believing what the devil has to say to you. Amen. I'm telling you, stop, stop confessing. Stop, stop pleading guilty to crimes you're not committing. Because nobody said you had to do that. Now you can suffer yourself to be defrauded. That's different. Whenever they accused everything of Yeshua. He didn't say a mumbly word. He didn't say, oh yeah, you got me. That was me. Guilty as charged. I did it. He didn't do any of it. You got some people in here that are more ready to run their own name down than to tell the truth about what really happened. Come on. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Now I totally understand that you're suffering self to be defrauded. Maybe the person you believe they can't handle the truth right now. So you're not saying anything. That's good. 
You need to le- need to know when you might destroy your brother or your sister. And you need to learn how to take the humble road. I said, but you also need to learn when all you have to do is use your big boy words and use your big girl words and, and talk and explain yourself rather than just sit there. Because the people that are abusing you and taking advantage of you, they like that you don't know how to formulate words. They're getting away with murder because you can't talk about what you're going through. Grow up. Pray to Yahweh. Ask Yahweh with the, for the words. Ask Yahweh for, for dreams and visions and, and way making. We say he's a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. But we just, you, you sing it, but you don't believe it. You got to believe it up here. You start believing in Yahweh, it says he's the rewarder of all those who will diligently seek it. Read on. Have you eyes of flesh? Uh huh. Or see you as man sees? Uh huh. Are your days as the days of man? No. <laughs> Yahweh's not like man. No. And Job knows he's not. Okay? So when you start going through hard times like Job's going through hard times, I'm not saying he's sinning. I'm, I'm not, I'm just saying Job is clearly going through something. He's asking so many questions. Have you ever been there? All I'm begging you to do. I'm not judging you for the thoughts that go through your mind. Should I stay in church? Should I stay or should I go now? Because you can't stop your mind from asking, should I stay or should I go? And it can happen every day. You cannot stop the thoughts that Satan puts in your head. Should I stay? Should I go? This happened. This happened. So yeah, it says, yeah, if I stay, there will be trouble. If I leave, there will be double. But I'm just trying to explain to you. You're going to go through things. In in serving Yahweh, you're going to have to suffer. Amen? You know that gut-wrenching feeling where you're this close to quitting. It can make you sick. It's like you've been trying to lose weight, and you can't until you're thinking about giving up. And you'll lose 10 pounds in a week. Because that whole entire week, you're like gut-wrenching, just sitting there. Uh, uh. Lee, we know you can't afford to lose any fat. <laughs> Blake? If you do, we can fire him <laughs> But you just whittle. You. But see, Yahweh says, okay, yeah, you can't stop Satan from talking to you. But you can start yourself talking back. So you don't know how many waves this war will have. Satan can come at you in waves. Like, you know, he just attacks. And then you're like, yeah, I agree with you, Satan, but I don't want to. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay. And here comes another legion of demons. Coming right at you again. And just like you can hit another evil thought. Well, what about this? You gotta go. You gotta go. This part will never fix. This will never be right. This person will never believe in you. They're always gonna want to make you do this. And you just, that's too much. That's what Satan says. It's too much. What they're asking for from you is to, is it really this hard? Like the word, like the word said, all, the way we preach to get on to you, like, do they really have to do it exactly like that? <laughs> like on Dazed and Confused, whenever Matthew McConaughey said, you got any weed? He said, no, he said, it'd be cooler if you did. There's things that we wish the church was. Listen. 
You're troubling yourself about stuff you don't have any power over. Leave all that alone. That's too high. You can go through anything if you could just make up your mind to go through it. So this is the spirit tonight begging you not to quit. <laughs> Read. Are your days as days of man? Uh huh. Are your years as man's days? Uh huh. That you inquire after my iniquity. Read. And search after my sin. Uh huh. You know that I am not wicked. Uh huh. There is none that can deliver out of your hand. Read. Your hands have made me and fashioned me together round about. Read. Yet you do destroy me. So it's like because of what Job was going through, he like he knows who Yahweh is. He knows that Yahweh formed him. But he's trying to reconcile why is all this bad stuff happening to me? Because Yahweh never explained it. We don't even read ever in the book of Job where Yahweh came down. You see, you see what happened was the devil came to me. It probably would have been real easy, right? Job's three friends. This is quotes. Three friends. They seemed like they really loved him and cared about him at first, but when, but but it it seemed like it was too big of a problem for them, so they freaked out and started being bad friends. I don't think they were really good friends. The whole situation manifested what kind of friends these people really were. They couldn't handle Job's grief. They couldn't just listen. That's been one of my problems. Ask Risa. She's like, I just want to tell you how I feel. But I'm like, you need to feel better. <laughs> Why? Because I'm feeling bad hearing you feel about how bad you feel. <laughs> and and I, I brought it up a bunch of times, but whenever Apostle Washington, Mother Karen went to the funeral because your loved one had passed away. And he was trying to like cheer you up and let's do this fast. And you were like, just let me grieve. We need to let all of us be saved by Yahweh. Lest we make it harder for you to be saved by Yahweh. Because none of us are even close to as encouraging as we think we are. Amen. Pat yourself on the back all you want. You're not as encouraging as you think you are at how making me want to stay in church. I'm still here because of Yeshua, not you. Now, I'm thankful when people stand up and show love and let Yeshua live through them. But every one of us got so many Problems that have yet to been fixed. I don't have any trials worshiping any men in, or women in this place. Because none of y'all are good enough for me to worship. At all. <laughs> when y'all say I used to be this way. Lots of people say I can't see it. I say I see it. Because <laughs> I have no illusions. About the flesh. You say you used to cuss, I believe it. Like a sailor, I believe you. Or you may you want to, you used to do some stuff you don't want to talk about? Me too. So that's why Yahshua gets all the glory. You know, when I was sick, you visited me. And all of that. It's like we don't even get any credit for any good we do. And I like it like that. Keeps us humble. Sometimes when you don't get the respect that you feel like you deserve, you say, like, can I remind you of the good things I did for you? <laughs> I want to do that. Sometimes I play around with my wife and my family. I'm like, hey, can I get some credit? <laughs> Y'all remember I said that and all that. And then I said, but I don't want to be this way. I don't want to be a person who feels like I need to try to seek credit. When all the credit is supposed to go to Yahweh. So I'm a better person. 
if I don't try to mention my good. Hallelujah. I'm not going to lie to you. I need Yahweh's help on that sometimes. Amen. Because you do want people to love and you want people to respect you. And you want to be helpful to other people. And you don't want people to see you as being bad. And so you feel all kinds of motive, motivation, all kinds of reasons from all kinds of different directions. Amen. Trying to trick you into trying to seek credit. But when you don't get it, you get frustrated. And then you become your your behavior becomes poorer. And then you your mind gets preoccupied with trying to prove your worth. And if you're too busy trying to prove your own righteousness currently, you will never go to the next level of a higher calling. That's why you want to backslide because you haven't been doing this thing right. You just don't realize it. That's right. That's right. Every time I feel like giving up, I reset and say, I must not be thinking right right now. Amen. Read on. Remember, I beseech you that you have made me as the clay. Uh-huh. And will, and will you bring me into dust again? Uh-huh. Have he's you got all these questions for Yahweh because of what he's going through? We all got all these kinds of questions. You will bring me to the dust again? You're always like, I will if it's my decision. <laughs> you better believe I'll bring you back to the dust again. If that's what's, if that's what's best for the whole of the whole big picture. I am Yahweh. I know the whole of the big picture. Look, I just want to be saved. I don't need credit. I don't need nothing. I want to be saved. I don't want to stay a hypocrite if I've psyched myself out. I want to be right. I don't want to be weak. I want to be strong in your sure Messiah. I don't want to make it hard on any of y'all. Any of y'all. Any of y'all. Therefore, I'm going to continue to strive even as I get older. Elder Jimmy, shake it. You think he wants to be this way? This don't even fit the man he's been his whole entire life. This is hard for you. The little bit of health problems I have right now doesn't match me. And it's hard. Like, this is not me. I'm a let's go kind of guy. The day before I, I got hired, when I called your wife to get hired at Subway, I'm a Subway employee. I twisted, turned, popped my knee. And I got sick. And still had to show up for my first day at work. I'm like, Satan, I don't think you want me to do this. Now, I understand that I'm going to be putting lazy people to shame. I already know that. No credit. And it won't be forever. But I might be there longer just because it's a good fundraiser for me to have more money. Now, Brother Willie does not have to feel inclined to have to come work with me because poor Apostle Hurley is up there all by himself. So sometimes y'all worry about us too much. I'm not that old. But you love me. You may be tired, exhausted, whooped, worked all day already as a salaried employee. And yeah, you may want to just go up there just because of me. I don't want you to do that. Every single one of us has to let everybody stand up and go through what they got to go through. Like real holy men and real holy women. Hallelujah. Yahweh blessed me with an opportunity to prove that I'm the same person I was when I got the second job at Domino's whenever me and Risa just got married. Because we needed money. And I'm not trying to be ugly when I say that there's already enough people asking for love offerings. I'm not trying to be ugly because these are I'm no judge of your condition. It could be because of your slowfulness. But it could also be because it's time and chance happens to every single one of us. Right? 
But read on. Have you not poured me, me out as milk? Uh huh. And curdled me like cheese? Uh huh. Have you clothed me with skin and flesh? Mm hmm. And have fenced me with bones and sinews? Read. You have granted me life and favor. Read. Your visitation has preserved my spirit. So he, he, he's acknowledging that Yahweh granted him life Amen. and favor. And what else? And the, and preserve my spirit. And preserve my spirit. So he, he knows that Yahweh is the one who did all this for him. Amen. So whenever you're going through something, your mind is going to be all over the place. Amen. And then sometimes Satan is just going to add fuel to the fire with his friends. Questioning him. Surely you did something wrong. Do you understand, saints? You got to go through what you got to go through just like Job. We all got sins of our youth. But thank Yahweh that Yahweh has cast all of that into the sea of forgetfulness. Forgiveness. Yeshua knows that he was the only man that never sinned. He knows that. Yeah. So he had that ammunition. We understand. But it did not make it less hard for him yeah. to go through what he had to go through. He's trying to say, I've allowed you to enter into me. You have the ability to take on the strength that I am offering you. There is no reason why you could be, you should be any different from me. I am telling you to enter in yeah. with me. But I'm unworthy. Yes, you are. Get in here. Hallelujah. Get in here. I'm going to give you the strength to walk upright. Give you, get in here. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you the strength to stop being scared. It may take some time. But your, the fear will go away. As you walk with me, you'll gain experience. Yes, yes. The perfect love is going to cast out all the fears. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that uh, uh, Sister Misty, when you first came to the Metroplex, it's scary. And, and you're like trying to drive to this job and that job. It was very intimidating. Okay. Well, the spirit of Yahweh, when we continue to walk with him, the fears go away. The fears go away. It was enough to say, I want to go back to La Back. When I came to church, just the church, just the church culture was nothing like mine. It was enough to make me to say, I just want to go back in the world. Because this is going to take work for me to get used to. It takes work to get used to being a saint. It's a change. It's different. The devil says the people you were friends with before will welcome you right back. And the devil will lie to you and saying they're less judgmental than the saints. Because the saints are always telling you this is wrong. Don't do that. Do this. Don't do that. That's a, that's a mirage. That's a lie. Hallelujah. Satan letting you do a whole bunch of stuff that you're not supposed to do does not make you more, make you more free. Right. It makes you bound and not know it. With chains of delusion. That's right. Amen. I'm almost done. Read. You have granted me life and favor. Mm -hmm. And your visitation has preserved my spirit. Read. And these things have you hidden in your heart. Uh -huh. I know that this is with you. Yes. If I sin, then you mark me. Uh -huh. And you will not acquit me for from my iniquity. So these things are true. Amen. Right? Amen. And he says he knows that he didn't do anything wrong. Yes. It's just a tough time. It's a tough time that he's going through. Hallelujah. Even Job can get lost in the pain, in the anguish. But yeah, if it wasn't for Yahweh being there to help him maintain his integrity, I'm telling you, that's why we have the exact same thing, saints. So, so what you got to, what you, I'm not going to make you confess your sins tonight. But what do you got to give up? What do you got to work on? What is it? Is it really as big as the devil's making it out to be? Amen. I understand if you haven't spoken in tongues, you want to, you got to get that Holy Ghost. You got to do it, but you got to do it though. All right, brother Blake, you got to do it. You got to lay aside every weight, every single thing, because this thing will stay a fairy tale to us. 
to a certain degree until we get rid of every single thing. Amen. Yeah. I, I just, I, I'm trusting that Sister Mia is stronger than she was when she first got here. Remember that day? I come out the front door and looked and saw, and I said, wow, I saw something I didn't want to see. I ain't going to rat you out. Are you still doing that? I don't think you are, because I think Yahweh has illuminated your eyes. See, I'm not, I'm not going to forever hold that against you. Because I got plenty of things that other people could hold against me that I've done. So you don't do unto others in a way that you want and want, wouldn't want them to do to you. I don't think we examine ourselves on that note as much as we should. We hold a lot on other people, but don't. We don't hold much of to ourselves. Read. Amen. If I am wicked, woe to me. And if I am righteous, yet will I not lift up my head. Uh huh. I am full of confusion. And it's Therefore, true. He was getting confused. That's right. right. Out of his own mouth. Right. That's right. Job is like, I didn't do anything wrong. Bad stuff happening to me. I'm confused. Right? right. Yeah. Okay. Sister Madeline, whenever that lady was ugly to you on the job and said she, but like she didn't like your modest apparel. Right? You were doing that right. You did what Yahweh told you to do, and yet the lady was ugly to you. It can be confusing serving Yahweh. Of course, we all got to always examine ourselves. Because Yahweh will, deal, will, will let something happen in this area to try to get your attention in the other area. Right? But sometimes, like Job, you may not be doing anything wrong at all. But he's still going to try you. Still going to test you. Because I'm telling you, you don't get anything but stronger in here. If you follow the Spirit, you don't get anything but stronger. Praise Yahweh. By the time Yahweh was done with Job, the very people that were criticizing him, they needed Job's prayers. Because Yahweh said, I'm going to work through Job. And, and he blessed him with more possessions, even more children. It's a blessing. But read on. If I am wicked, woe to me. Uh -huh. and I, if I am righteous, yet will I not lift up my head. Uh -huh. I am full of confusion. Therefore, see you my affliction. Yeah. For it increases. Yes. You hunt me as a fierce lion. And uh -huh. again, you show yourself marvelous upon me. Uh huh. You renew your witnesses against me and increase your indignation upon me. Read. Changes in war are against me. That's how it is, saints. I'm sorry. You might as well give up now if you think it's going to change. Amen. Amen. If you think that serving Yahweh does not come with afflictions. Amen. Come back whenever you're willing to rethink that. This is nobody's got a gun to your head. You want to go live a devil? Go live a devil. If you're underage and you don't want to obey your parents, just leave. That's right. Like, what did you just say, Apostle? You tell them right. We don't want you to. You shouldn't. According to the law, you're not even supposed to. You're underage. Yahweh is sick of the hypocrisy. Amen. That's my point. Don't take what I just said too far. Amen. Yahweh's sick of it. Yes. You know that there's going to be 13 year olds in the lake of fire. Amen. That's right. No respect to person. Sinners wreak havoc in their households. I don't care how old they are. Trouble. No, we don't want you to go. We don't want anybody to go. We want you to humble yourself. Realize that this is the best place for you. But just me saying that might have got some people's attention who otherwise weren't listening. We don't want you to go. We want you to fully give your whole entire heart. 
I love, I hate it. I love hate it. When people say all God wants is your heart. Cause it's true. Cause if he, if he has your heart, he has everything else. Cause the heart is the center of you. If Yahweh is at your center, it's controlling everything else. Yahweh wants your heart, not the pumping thing. The center of your mind. He wants the heart of you. If he has the heart of you, he has everything else. So you won't buy the wrong shoes. That was a coincidence I looked at you when I said that. You won't. Because, well, he used to, the shoes untied, right? You won't buy the wrong car. I'm telling you, my mom tried to get me in trouble with those green Converse. <laughs> it's not about sin. It's about what's best. Yeah. And I, I listened as much as I didn't want to listen to Apostle Stanford. I listened to him and I, I, did, I, get, I got rid of him. Because cause look, y'all already about to go buck wild. <laughs> what's it going to be like if I keep on making concessions in my life for this, that, yeah. and the other? Right. right? You know, because we got, you know, we don't even wear rings, Amen. you know, just to avoid that problem. Some of our watches are getting bigger and bigger and flashier and flashier. That's right. It's very unnecessary. But, you know, the flesh is always tugging. Tugging to do more. Tugging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. We just gotta yeah. keep reeling ourselves back. Yeah. Real. It's better to always reel yourself back because yeah. what if you try to help somebody and they think they see something wrong in you and it makes them not listen to you? The most important thing that you can do is have some you to be in, to be able to influence yeah. in the church of Yeshua Messiah. It was all about Yeshua's influence on his disciples to where Yahweh was with him. Of course, he worked the signs and wonders and the miracles. And definitely that helped him for people to believe in him. But the love he showed, it influenced his disciples so powerfully that they murdered him. But he rose from the dead. That. His disciples were so influenced by him that they signed up to do like Yeshua and take a path where they knew they were going to be killed because Yeshua told them they were going to and they still stayed. Now look at us. And how waffly we are out. <laughs> Nobody's trying to kill you. You're not even covered with boils. Like Job. All your kids dead. All your money gone. Whenever I find out that we don't have money to pay a bill. It just hits you. Have you ever, like, when you're almost in an accident where your whole skin lights up and you feel that little chorus of, ah, find out you don't have money for the bill. I'm, I'm still not, I'm, I'm still, uh, I'm not past feeling. It's like you would think sometimes, have you ever felt a feeling? People getting distracted because people walk around. Don't worry about them. Hallelujah. Have you ever felt a feeling that you know, <clears throat> you know, you, you don't want to feel that way? Amen. Like in here, we know we're supposed to love one another, but sometimes you feel anger towards your brother or your sister. Now, or, Maybe even something as bad as you wish you had a different husband or a different wife. You have they had that feeling. You thinking it. Oh, I wish I would have chose so and so. 
And then afterwards you're like, I hate myself that I even felt that way or even thought that way because that is not becoming of a saint. Well, I'm just trying to tell you, the Satan, the Satan, Satan. It, it, it's in Satan to test you with these things, and it's in your flesh to agree with the devil. So, just accept the fact that you're going to continue to go through things. Whenever I, like I said, at feeling we don't have the money, ah, uh, I wish that I would just have no feeling and say, Amen. You always already worked it out. <laughs> that's what that's what I'm working towards. But whenever I don't feel that way and I have that knee jerk negativity or doubt at first, I accept it and say, but that's not who I'm going to be. This is just Yahweh testing me. This is Yahweh showing me where I'm at right now. But where am I going to be after if I don't quit, if I keep going on? Will I ever get to that point where I hear, you know, this happened with the saint. This happened. Bad news. Bad news. Bad news. And I'm just like, oh, hey, amen. You no, know, still care. You care about other people. Your heart goes out. But you are not troubled. Like you are firmly on the foundation. You just no shadow of turning. Nothing. Let's strive for that. Amen. Let's strive for that. Amen. Do you understand, saints? Amen. Don't let anything turn you as you're growing. Acknowledge the weakness and walk past it. Amen. Read on, I'm almost done. Why then have you brought me forth out of the womb? Uh huh. Oh, that I had given up the ghost. Read. And no eye had seen me. Read. I should have been as though I had not been. Read. I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. Uh huh. Are not my days few? Read. Cease then and let me alone. And that I may take Read. comfort a little. Read. Before I go from where I shall not return. Uh huh. Even now, to the land of darkness. Whenever I hear Job say, cursed be the day I was born, I always say, no, it wasn't. You were blessed. Job. It's better, it's better to not run Yahweh down. That, that, that's what we say. Is don't curse Yahweh. Don't charge him foolishly. Like his wife said, curse God and die. When he said cursed, and he just said it'd been better if I was never born. Easy. It ain't that bad. You're blessed that Yahweh created you. The only thing that you have a value that you can take to the other side of this life is the fact that you exist. Amen. And what if Yahweh decided not to create you? You would not even be. Amen. This is a gift. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how bad you feel in this body of flesh. This is the, this is the only gift. This is the blessed gift to be alive. To be able to go through what you got to go through. You've been given all the strength. So, so that helps me say thank you, Yahweh, that I was born. Thank you, Yahweh, for what I've got to go through. Blessed be Yahweh. Blessed be Yahweh. So stay strong, brothers and sisters. I love you. And uh, may Yahweh bless y'all tonight. Let's just take the words that uh, Pastor Bibbs and I gave to you tonight and let's apply them to our life if we do that. You know, we're going to be able to make it. Yeah. So at this time, we're going to move forward into service. Let's all rise and receive Deacon Jenkins by saying praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Amen. Praise Yahweh, saints. Praise Yahweh. Thank Yahweh for the words that came forth from a beloved Pastor Bibbs as well as our uh, beloved Pastor Hurley. 